Okay, so we got a good picture of Murray Rothbard, the man. But Lou, why is he important? What will people get most out of his writings? Well, look at Austrian economics. He actually uh, improved on Mises. Of course, he stood on Mises' shoulders. He loved Mises. In fact, if he was talking at length about Mises, he often would choke up, right, even until the end of his life. Mises had that effect on people, and he's an, another extraordinary, two great economists of the 20th century. He would have been the last one to say, I improved on Mises. But in some small ways, he did. And of course, by systematizing Mises, so we look at man, economy, and state as versus so human action by systematizing him, made him uh, much more accessible. But also in terms of monopoly and, and other areas, he, he actually improved on Mises, and he wanted to be improved on himself. I mean, and he didn't feel that he was the be-all and the end-all, that nobody is. And uh, he was always trying to encourage uh, younger people to write, to research. He, was, he would throw out idea after idea for dissertations, papers, and that sort of thing as to ways to advance the Austrian school. So he had, a, in his writing as well as his personal example, a big, a big influence on the school. And I, I think his style was slightly different from Mises' style. Mises early on uh, decided that he wasn't going to go after people personally, that he would just stick to the ideas. And that went along with his great dignified old world gentleman. It was Murray's view that it's important to not only show and expose economic error, but if people are ripping us off to tell, to tell you know, that in order to advance the cause, it was important that people realize they were being ripped off. It wasn't this, these things aren't just a matter of uh, Romney being wrong in economics. He's actually a criminal like all these guys, right. so that that's important. But I would say Murray's biggest influence, and of course he had a huge influence as an historian, his PhD dissertation on the on the Panic of 1819, later published, still the key work, even recognized as such by, by the regular historians, the key work on that episode. His monetary history and so forth, his work on the Fed, I mean, just uh, tremendously uh, innovative. To the extent we're all focused on the Fed, that's Murray Rothbard. Now, of course, Mises and the theory of money and credit in 1912 was explaining uh, what a central bank was and what it would result in. But Rothbard put uh, meat on the bones and talked about all the individuals involved and who was ripping who off and how it was happening and why these various guys were doing it and why, uh, you know, not only was John Maynard Keynes wrong in economics, he was a moral monster, too. And Murray thought that, that you know, that sort of thing was important. But perhaps his greatest, at least people would think it right now, his greatest contribution was to libertarianism. And he really was the creator of modern libertarianism. What he did was he combined the libertarian tradition, which already existed in, in, in America and elsewhere, and Tucker and Spooner and these guys, uh, combined it with a natural law uh, view of, of mankind and with anarchy. Before Rothbard, anarchism, even in, uh, by the... Uh, people who would be called the libertarian anarchists of the 19th century, they had serious problems, serious problems in economics and many other areas. So what Murray did was combine Austrian economics and anarchy and natural law uh, based on Aristotle and Aquinas into current libertarianism. And it's, it is the, the most powerful political philosophy, because I happen to think it's the correct political philosophy too, but it's just extremely powerful in its ability to convince. And we're noticing this, especially among the young, now that Rothbard is available for free everywhere on, on the web. And also Ron Paul, of course, has had a huge effect. Ron, Ron's revolution is in a sense a Rothbardian revolution. So what Murray did with libertarianism, that I would say is, is having the biggest impact right now and will continue to have it. And it's what the state fears the most. And you only have to read Rothbard's, as I mentioned, his. if you look at his total works, you know, you could spend, you could spend decades reading and trying to absorb them. A great project, by the way. But just reading, for example, Murray's essay on the anatomy of the state, you will never be the same again. And this is based on, on his own construct of libertarianism. And there's also my other favorite essay of his, and there are many, many that would go in this category, but War, Peace, and the State. So if you understand these key issues, what is the state? How does it come to exist? Why it needs to be gotten rid of? But you read that article, you will never see anything the government does the same again. I mean, it's definitely the you know, taking the right colored pill. It's a, you know, the scales drop from your eyes. And you see, you're able, just by reading and absorbing that one essay, and it's beautifully written, of course, uh, and it draws you right in. You don't have to make yourself read it. Once you start, you're sorry when you finish. I think that's the power of Rothbard. And it's funny, I had, somebody had written to me about, actually had written an article in the New York Times, a Cato guy, about, thank goodness, you know, Rothbard is pretty much dead and gone. Although the unfortunate thing about the Ron Paul movement is it's having an effect of bringing Rothbard back. So we need to get rid of that and we need to just concentrate on Friedman. And so in my response, I said, well, I knew Milton Friedman. 
Milton Friedman was a, was a brilliant guy, but he was also a Republican economist. He was always working, promoting, whether it's Nixon or Reagan or Bush or whatever. He was connected. Of course, he advocated things like uh, income tax withholding and negative income tax and school vouchers and many, many state building programs. But I said, outside of neoclassical economics and academic economics, Milton Friedman is a tiny figure today compared to Rothbard. First of all, his academic writing is, is nothing like Rothbard's. He was also wrong and it's unpersuasive. So somebody in attacking me said, look, this, I was really making an unfair comparison because Friedman's books were all very expensive, whereas Rothbard's books were all free on the web. <laughs> so yeah. it was un unfair of me to make, well, but of course, because they are free on the web, uh, you make them available to everybody, all his articles, everything of Rothbard. He's conquering. So I miss him every day. I wish to goodness he were here. He'd be, wouldn't he be loving the Ron Paul campaign, Romney, Obama, he'd be writing a wonderful essay this time, maybe email it to me rather than fax it every day yeah. on all, all the goings on. And he would be, for example, the best known anti-war figure in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one of the things that would have happened because because he was the great libertarian anti-war person and bent the libertarian party to his will with a Rothbardian platform, which unfortunately they got rid of because they didn't like the fact that it, it was against the CIA and against the empire and against war and similar uh, beloved pieties of the Republicans. Lou, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. This is great, great stuff we've been discussing. And ladies and gentlemen, the greatest libertarian entrepreneur of all time, Lou Rockwell. Lou, thank you very much for taking the time out and talking about Murray and, and other topics. I appreciate it. Bob, an honor to be on your show. Check out Lou Rockwell's website at lourockwell.com. That's L-E-W Rockwell.com, where Lou brings the Rothbardian spirit to us every day with links to commentaries on current events from a libertarian perspective.